There are a few pre-Madonna plants that I vow never to buy again because they're a massive pain in the behind that you do well to avoid in the shops. So save yourself some bother and take note. I've suffered so you don't have to. And remember our kid, these are just my personal ramblings. So, you know, keep it clean in the comments. The original G's of this channel will know that my favorite plant has been the Philodendron Birkin for the longest time. She's a bit Marmite, but the pinstripe leaves leave me weak at the knees. But I do know that lots of folks really don't appreciate her for some reason. Well, even I'm now starting to lose patience with her, to the point where I'm tempted to lob her in the bin. This gal really does make me work for her affection, even more so than Mrs. Sheffield, and that's saying something. I mean, look at her. What's she doing? The new white leaves are trying to come out, but they're either getting all tied up in knots or turning brown and mushy before they fall off. I've been trying to crack the code for three years now, but she's as mysterious as the Bermuda Triangle. I've tried all sorts. I thought she hated having wet feet, so I moved her into a terracotta pot, but this hasn't improved anything. I thought maybe she wasn't getting enough vitamin D, so I moved her to one of my brightest spots, but she seems to be complaining about that too. When I repotted her a few months ago, there wasn't anything suspicious with the roots either, so Lord knows what the problem is. I think I'll end up splitting her into multiple offspring and stick them on a rehab program. If they're still not happy after that, then there's only one place they're all destined for. And if you've been here since the beginning and endured those awful videos at the start, let me know in the comments. This next one leaves me feeling gutted because I absolutely love it when it's healthy. The trouble is, it's only healthy for about two minutes before it starts running amok. I mean, look at those leaves. Mwah, gorgeous. This is a Tradescantia tricolor, by the way. A plant with lovely pink and cream variegation. Almost good enough to eat. Yeah, don't though, okay? We all know Tradescantias are a nightmare, of course, and this fella is no different. The stems get longer and they die off at the base and the whole thing looks like it's been dragged through a hedge backwards by an angry bear. The trick is to restart him as soon as he does this, but honestly, it becomes a pain. I mean, I must have done this about a hundred times at this point and it's getting pretty tedious. I tried just lobbing everything off in a bonus video I did for my Patreon subscribers and forcing it to grow a fresh mop, but it looks like most of the leaves are coming out green. Not what you want. If your tricolor is going green, by the way, one thing is happening. He's not getting enough light and the green leaves are acting like bullies and taking over the schoolyard. You need to pop him somewhere bright and kick those bullies out of the school. This gives the variegated leaves a fighting chance of being seen. Look at this guy. Just what is he doing? He's made himself an awkward shape to try and avoid missing out on the sun. I feel sorry for him in a way, tucked behind his brick wall, but he seems to be making the best of a bad situation at least. This is a philodendron new red, by the way. And this awkward shape he's got himself into isn't the reason I'm hating on him. I actually find that quite endearing. No, it's the constant lack of sunburn he always seems to have. I guess the clue is in the name, right? New red. So the leaves are green, but with a red tint. Well, this tends to give it an unfortunate appearance of always looking sunburned. I'm constantly fretting about whether he's happy or not until I remember it's just the way he is. And the leaves are also dust magnets, similar to the fanboy's favorite, the Monstera Deliciosa. So a regular wipe is required to avoid him looking like a peasant from the 18th century. And cleaning leaves isn't my favorite pastime. So I don't thank him for that. Can I get an amen on that? Moving on. It's always worth having a pop at the Chinese money plant or the Pilea pepperomoides if you want to go fancy because it feels like she's always having a pop at me. We know the story, don't we? Losing leaves at the bottom as a matter of course and we're just supposed to take it on the chin and have an ugly plant in the home. Well, not me. I used to propagate these guys all the time to the point where I had about eight of them in the house but one by one over the years I've put them up for adoption and now I'm only left with the grumpy mother. She's probably upset that I've taken all her kids away from her. Anyway, there are things you can do to stop the hair loss which I cover in a recent video but I'm at the point where if the mother succumbs I won't be replacing her. Oops, I should have said that quietly. The problem is I have nowhere to put her. She's got awkward limbs and takes up too much space. I had her on my fireplace half but she complained she wasn't getting enough light so now she's just in a kind of limbo like some sort of nomad maybe outside is best now we come to the true quasimodo of the plant world the ugly beast himself mr alocasia amazonica nicknamed the elephant ear i just of course i actually quite like this guy i do have a soft spot for an ugly outcast and this guy certainly is that 
His friends are always laughing at him, the poor thing. The problem with him is the same problem with all his cousins and nephews, an innate desire to lose all his leaves. Yes, as the days get shorter and the nights longer over winter, this is a cue for lots of alocasias all over the world to go into dormancy, a super annoying trait that only a decent grow light can avoid. Is this happening to yours? Let me know down below. This guy was down to a single decrepit leaf last winter and all the growth you see before you now is entirely new growth from this year. And look, you can see a leaf is on the turn already. So I best buckle up for the same thing this winter, I guess. I'd stick him under a grow light, but honestly, all the best spots are taken. I best get on to Sansi and up my grow light game with the code for a 15% discount in the description to this video. See what I did there? Crafty. My newsletter subscribers received some nifty tips for winter plant care straight into their inbox a few weeks ago and you can get free tips like that yourself by signing up. Link in the description. The string of hearts, or should I say the string of nightmares. I got so sick of mine that I turned it into this. I chopped it all off in this Patreon video and hopefully the cuttings are all rooting in this tray of soil. The white stuff on top is diatomaceous earth by the way, link to a video on that in the top right corner. The most egregious thing about the string of hearts is the tangly mess the vines get into. I ain't about that life, let me tell you. So I decided to start again and set myself up for getting into the exact same mess as before. Needless to say, I won't be buying one again. Well, I say that, but I'll probably fall for its bewitching charms in my local nursery because I'm weak-willed. Right, orchids. Yes, orchids. Before you shout at me, I do know they're lovely. They also seem to have a bit of a cult following on YouTube, which is a bit odd, but I just find them, I don't know, a bit awkward. They don't seem to have evolved from modern homes. I'm being far too finicky, I know, but like the Chinese money plant, I have nowhere to put him. They don't fit anywhere. They want lots of light, of course, but the trouble is the leaves are an incredibly awkward shape that they don't fit onto any of my windowsills. I've been shifting them around my house for a year now and they still don't have a settled spot. So yes, cracking plant with gorgeous flowers, but I've got nowhere to put a new one in my home. Is this just me or do you find that as well? Let me know down below. I used to struggle with them long before I made this channel, but I just think that was me being newbie to be honest. Newbie, not booby. They're pretty easy really if you give them lots of light and don't put them in soil. Make the roots angry and you won't hear the end of it. You know, the reason I've lost most of my hair isn't because of age or having two kids. No, it's having this green orange plant. The proper name is Chlorophytum orchidastrum if you're interested. Catchy. Black leaves has been the thing that I've been fighting for over a year and touch wood, I think I found the solution. Doesn't mean I'm going to buy another though. No, 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 no. Far too much hassle for a lifetime, let me tell you. Medium light and water conditioner in case you're unfortunate enough to be battling with this plant. They don't seem to like bright light and they hate the buildup of chlorine in the soil from your tap water. Do those two things and I think you've got a fighting chance. Fingers crossed my plant friends. Now, I love Hoyas. Just look at those flowers, gorgeous. So what's the problem then? They're rampant. They take over everything. They're like the Japanese knotweed of the indoor plant world. One minute they're small and harmless and the next they're weaving their way through a host plant like a bow constrictor strangling its prey. My devil's ivy is the perfect example. I'm actually a little fearful for him. Is he getting choked out or not? I guess time will tell. Give Hoyas a bit of light and some water every now and then and they lose their minds. Mrs. Sheffield isn't best pleased because the Devil's Ivy is one of her favourites. It'll be fine, I tell her. So there'll be no more Hoyas in the house then. Most of you will know that Mr. Sheffield's plant kryptonite is the Calafea Zebrina. If you're new here, Mr. Sheffield is me. I don't know why, but humour me. I've often moaned about her on this channel because of those pesky brown leaves and I did have a solution to that, which I will link to in the corner, but now a new problem has reared its ugly head. It seems every limb on this gal needs to see the light. If they don't, then they'll go all gangrene and need amputating. I've got her sat here under my grow light. It's a busy spot so everyone is bunched together, a bit like an overcrowded lift. This means her lower limbs aren't seeing the light properly. And well, look, there's always something with this diva. I will keep her though, because I do seem to have this weird love-hate relationship with her. I love her and she hates me. If only that was a one-off in my life. There is one Calafea that is forgiving though. 
Well, there's probably more than one actually, but there's one that I know and love, and it's the Calafair Elgergrass. I've been a doting parent of mine for a couple of years now, and I'm always proud to show him off to all of my friends and family when they come round, which is hardly ever. Maybe they hate all the showing off I do. Hmm. Anyway, I made a video all about this guy and how I got him into such great shape with hardly any brown leaves, and you can watch it by clicking on the link. Oh, and subscribe please.